Hey guys, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So today I want to take you to a very familiar story. Most are very, very familiar with this, but I want to give you some different context on this that I think will help us maybe appreciate it and process a little bit differently. So the context with this, there's an LDS blogger, her name's Tiffany Webster, and she wrote a blog all about this. So I want to give her credit for this because I think it's awesome. And there's actually a video that was done about this. I think it's super cool. So I'm just giving you my take on it. So she said this, she said, I remember being 15 years old sitting in a Sunday school class. The teacher had just passed out a piece of paper with the question, where do you see yourself in 15 years? Easy. This was my list. Now, if you're watching this, this list is pretty exhaustive. Successfully graduated from college, married to the man of my dreams, mother of four to five kids, each two years apart, living in my beautiful custom home, running a successful business from my home, just when the kids are asleep, of course. I'll read my scriptures every morning, right after my 5 a.m. workout, training for a triathlon and a marathon before the kids get up. Uh, We'll have family scripture study and prayer every day. I'll make healthy meals every night, take extras to my neighbor and those in need and I'll finally have stopped eating sugar and carbs altogether and will have conquered skinny Uh, as I sat back in my chair completely satisfied with the long list I just made I took a deep breath dreaming of what it would be like to be living a life where I felt enough had enough and did enough a life that seemed at that moment full of contentment and happiness little did I know that day in Sunday school I bought into one of Satan's greatest lies the perfect lie which is what this blog post is actually called there was nothing I wanted more than to feel enough and to be enough I wanted to be like my savior I wanted to live a successful life and be a good Christian student sister daughter friend however at a young age my thinking was distorted and my reality was skewed. You see, I was a perfectionist chasing a life without flaw, an unattainable place that I thought existed, a place that if somehow I worked hard enough and long enough, I could finally arrive at. But no matter how hard I tried, how much I did, how much I lived by my good Christian checklist of praying, reading my scriptures, having faith, I didn't feel happy. I felt stressed. I felt guilty that I never had enough time for anything that I was doing. Guilty that I wasn't measuring up. I didn't feel peace. In fact, I felt like an utter failure. The gospel of Jesus Christ is supposed to bring hope and peace into my life. So why wasn't it working for me? In my efforts to live like Christ, I live by this math equation. Now she gives this equation. Me plus more equals Christ-like. Now let me pause for a moment here. Do any of you see any problems with that equation? (laughs) Me plus more equals Christ-like. So as you're going into this, what Sister Webster does here is she takes you over to the story of the feeding of the 5,000, which is found over in Matthew 14. It's also found in Mark chapter 6. It's also found in John chapter 6. There's various iterations of this. So the one I want to take you to is Mark chapter 6, where just like we were talking about yesterday, you've got Jesus who has just withdrawn himself to be able to mourn uh, the death of John the Baptist. And you get into verse 34, where it says, Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them. And and they were a sheep, not having a shepherd. He began to teach them things. And all of a sudden he's looking around, verse 36, they have nothing to eat. Okay. Now you're going through this story. All they end up with is five loaves and two fishes. Now back to what Sister Webster's thought was, When 5,000 people needed to be fed and the only food available was a meager five loaves of bread and two fish, the Lord didn't say it was enough. He didn't look away or condemn. No, he took what they had and used his power to make it enough and to feed thousands. In fact, in Matthew's account, it says these are 5,000 besides men and women. So we could have had upwards of 10, 15, 20,000. Again, that's like filling an entire sports arena and trying to feed them with five loaves and two fishes. Well, she said this, she said, he made shortcomings, not just adequate or enough, but he made them more than enough. So the reality of this, the whole me plus more equals Christ-like is not the way to go. And she brings up a, a couple other examples like me plus boyfriend equals loved or me plus significant other you know, equals loved. Me plus money equals successful. Me plus more A's equals smarter. Me plus skinnier equals happy, right? Okay, mo- all of those lies. So what then is the correct equation? Well it should be me plus Christ equals more. That's what this story is all about, where you see Jesus Christ 
magnifying our efforts. It's not me plus more equals more, you know, Jesus and Christ like. It's I've got to involve Jesus Christ in my life more. I've got to do everything that I can involve Christ in that process. And then that's where the more is going to be. It reminded me of this guy here. Many of you know Dallas Jenkins, who is the creator of the TV series, The Chosen, which I think has helped us love Jesus just a little bit more and all those apostles as well. I guess as he was starting out this endeavor, he had had a couple failures that just did not work very well. So he's trying to figure out what to do. And again, this man's not a member of our faith, but he's a good Christian. He said that as he was kind of working through this, he received some inspiration where it said, your job is not to feed the 5,000. Your job is to provide the loaves and fishes. And so I think as we provide that, that's where you see the Savior start performing miracles. It reminds me of a general conference talk that was given back in October of 2016 by Elder J. Devin Cornish. He said the question was brought up, am I good enough and am I going to make it? His response was this. It was, of course, there's no such thing as being good enough. None of us could ever earn or deserve our salvation, but it is normal to wonder if we're acceptable before the Lord, which is what this blog was all about, which is how I understand these questions. Let me be direct and clear. The answers to the questions, am I good enough and will I make it, are yes, you are going to be good enough, and yes, you are going to make it as long as you keep repenting and do not rationalize or rebel. The God of heaven is not a heartless referee looking for any excuse to throw us out of the game. None of us will ever be good enough save through the merits and mercy of Jesus Christ. I witness to you that if you will really try and will not rationalize or rebel, repenting often and pleading for the grace or help of Jesus Christ, you positively are going to be good enough. And that is acceptable before the Lord. You're going to make it to the celestial kingdom being perfect in Christ. Which now, putting all of this together, uh, Sister Webster's blog, after teaching this wonderful idea of me plus Christ equals more. She concluded her blog by saying this. She said, 15 years ago, I made a list of what I thought my life would look like. 15 years later, my life looks nothing like that list. I'm still broken. I still have health challenges. And some days my life feels like a real mess. But now, instead of chasing perfection, I'm chasing Jesus. And I've never been happier. And so I really think the way she describes this in the story of the feeding of the 5,000 is such a wonderful way to help us understand that the more we involve the Savior in our lives, the more we will be. And I can testify to you that that is true. He takes our five loaves and two fishes and makes miracles. I know that's true. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing. We love that you do that. Check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day. See you next time. Godspeed. Bye-bye.